Check out part one of this series to see some of the external modifications we made to this 2019 Toyota Crew Max. Now, let's get inside the truck and see some of the accessories and additions that we've made. Let's get to it. All right, so going into the back, So back here, there's a lot going on, okay? <laughs> so we have a bed slide that I put in there. This is the 1,000 pound version. You can get these going all the way up to 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds is overkill considering this truck is only rated to carry 1,700 pounds. And with all the stuff I have on it already, there's no way I'm putting 2,000 pounds in this thing. Another thing I like about this one is that it's low profile. My concern with these bed slides is that it takes up some of your space in your truck. This one takes maybe four or five inches. Okay, so that means you're losing a bit of volume, but because I have this tall canopy on here now, I make up for it in that respect. And it certainly pays itself off because every day I'm pulling stuff out of here. So it makes it much easier than having to climb into the bed of the truck all the time. So there's three locking points. So one where it's locked in there, you pull this, locks in there, and fully extended locks in there. So there's three convenient locking points. So if you haven't seen my video about my Molly truck panel, you can go and check that out. I have a lot of stuff in here. I've already talked about the stuff that I have on this side over here. And on that side, I have medical kit, I have a fire extinguisher, ax, I have a knife, I have mouthing radios. I have a double-sided wetter haul ax, just in case of zombies. I have a Katana Boy 650 and a nice convenient narrow head shovel. And of course, some pepper spray, cause you never know when there's gonna be bears around, right? We also have on this side, some binoculars. We have a spotlight flashlight. We have our tools, of course, definitely need tools. Lots of tie down straps. We have some rope in case we need to do some MacGyver, Ninja, grappling hook type stuff in the apocalypse. And we have our mirror safety gas mask with our P3 filters because this is fire season. And as you can see in the background here, this place is a tinder box and it's gonna go any day now. So we gotta be prepared for that. Also have a full box of fishing tackle back there. Two bait caster rods ready to rock. If I, you know, going by a river and I see an opportunity, it's really quick for me to pull out some fishing rods and go fishing. One great thing about these Molly panels, it is it allows you to maximize the use of your truck. So if it wasn't for them, all of that would pretty much be wasted space. There are other accessories you can put in there over the wheel wells, but it really allows me to have nice clean organization along the sides, which doesn't interfere with the functionality of the bed slide. Okay. So up here, there's a table which stows away in the top. And underneath that table, I have this monocrystalline solar panel for the uh, Energy Flex system. So all I have to do to get that out is turn that, and then I can. So under here, I have the solar panel, which seems to fit perfectly in there. I was very surprised. So we have this, and if I wanted to use this in conjunction, with this, all I have to do, put this up here like so, and then I use the extension cord to plug it into the flex, and we're charging. Now this thing here is pretty cool. This is a stainless steel table. Stows away in the top, pops open like that. My only gripe is it doesn't have any locking things for the legs, but still very sturdy. So if you need to do some backwoods butchering or just having a picnic with the family, it's a nice little addition. This is a cool little accessory that I found online. And basically it allows you to use the latch that your door latches onto as a step. Now I'm still not too sure how I feel about this because you're putting a lot of stress on that point. However, I've heard a lot of good things about it and it seems to work just fine. And as you can see, it can support my body weight. So it allows me to get up top here if need be and do what I gotta do. But I definitely wouldn't be putting a lot of dynamic pressure on that. Okay, so we're up here on top of the truck as you can see. 
And on top of the truck, I have two Prinsu roof racks, one mounted to the RSI Smart Cap, one mounted to the roof of the 2019 Toyota Crew Max. Now, the one that's mounted to the roof that you're seeing there, that one is bolted right into the roof. The one on the RSI Smart Cap doesn't bolt in. There is a rack system back here. So it just slides into the rack system. You don't have to drill into it. I will say with the Prinsu roof racks, I'm not overly impressed, uh, primarily because there's so much assembly. It's not a unibody design. You can get some rooftop platforms which are just as low profile, but are all one solid piece of steel. There is a lot of assembly with a Prinsu roof rack and a lot of swearing that goes along with that, unfortunately. As you can see there, I do have some load panels and those allow you to just have more points that you can bolt stuff onto, like those max tracks, traction boards that you see there. Those are great for uh, recovery. And if you get stuck in the snow or the mud or whatever, over here, we have a high lift jack, which I can now use in conjunction with the rock sliders on the side of the truck. So this is the SXMA gas canister and it holds five gallons. You can also get ones that are eight gallons. And this is a very similar thickness to the Scepter military grade gas canisters that we sell at CanadianPreparedness.com. Only this one packs flat, so it's really good for those load panels on your roof rack or if you want to put it on the side. Not quite a, as durable a nozzle system as the scepters but still works. It's got a really nice flow rate. Already pretty much half empty. They say you can use it as a traction board meaning that you can if you get stuck you can put this under your wheel but I wouldn't trust it for that especially for a truck this heavy. Maybe for a smaller car, it will work for that purpose. Really nice, built really, really tough. And I just put this here for demonstration to give you some ideas of what you could use this space for. And I have a knockoff generic uh, Pelican style case, which of course you can put many different things in. I'm sure you can use your imagination as to what. And then we have our solar panel over here, which is nicely supported on the uh, side windows. All right, so let's go on inside the truck and see what we got going on in there. Okay, so um, on the interior here, I have mostly tow recovery related stuff. I have a air compressor. I'm not sure if you guys have seen these before. They work really well, really handy. It runs on a lithium battery. I have a just a tire plug kit in case I ever needed it. Cords for my wireless winch if I need to charge the, the remote control. I do have some block and tackle in here and some diagnostic tools. I do have an extension cord. I have some emergency food backed in here. There's a jack that's tucked back here. With these Toyotas, this doesn't come with the build. So you actually have to, I actually had to put this in and what you have to do is cut out some squares, stick this thing in. It's actually a pretty quick job. I'd say it probably took me a couple hours to, to put this in here, but in the factory Toyota Tundras, there's no under seat storage, which is really, really dumb because this is all hollow space. So I don't know why they wouldn't have <laughs> made under seat storage in here, why you have to do this aftermarket. You can get uh, locking ones, but I just got this one because it was cheaper. The locking one, they wanted like 600 bucks for it. And I just wasn't willing to splurge that much. You're gonna have to pardon the dog here. This is a dog truck, so it is, what it is. And this thing basically just sits right in there. As you can see, I can pull it out. It doesn't bolt in, just sits right in there with the weight of the stuff and these seats fold right down on it, just like so. Okay, so what I've done in here, I haven't really done a whole lot up front here. I did change out the stereo. This is a Pioneer stereo. I wanted the bigger screen and the more advanced navigation features. This is Android Auto. It also allows you to use a lot of other apps and stuff like that. So that's basically the only modification I did here. I did have another screen in here from a company called Phoenix Auto, which is a nice big screen. It looks like a Tesla design, but it was absolute garbage. Response time on the screen was terrible. And there was just all sorts of malfunctions, my hazard lights, I couldn't use my hazard lights. So in my experience, I would avoid Phoenix Automotive 
stereos. So we also have this emergency escape tool here. This is a glass breaking tool. And I had it originally stuck with some adhesive to here, but the adhesive came out. Basically it just separates from this thing and you could use that to smash the window if you need to, to get out in a pinch. There's also a seat belt cutter on there. I like it because it's a fuller size. In a pinch, uh, those little ones that you can get, they're, they're good, the uh, rescue me's, the smaller ones, but I think if it's something that's that serious of an emergency, I don't wanna be fumbling around with fine motor skills. I would rather have something which is larger, easy to access, and which both passengers can access, okay? That's the most important thing. But I do have mini rescue me's in the side door compartments here. I also have a CB radio up here with single sideband, and I do have a handheld CB radio that I can talk to this one with in case we have to, you know, do some stuff from the truck where I'm communicating out in the field to the top of the truck there. We do have our radar detector, which has come in very handy and saved me a lot of money on my insurance. And of course we do have a dash cam there. Absolutely essential thing nowadays to have a dash cam. And there's a camera that points inside the car also. The only other uh, thing that I've done to this is inside this center console here, which I'm not going to show you because, you know, it's just, it's a mess and there's a lot of personal stuff in there also. This is basically a big open empty box when Toyota gives it to you so you can easily customize it. So there's a few things in there that I've done. I'll post some links to stuff in the description below for all of the stuff that I've shown you today. But let me know what other types of modifications you think I should make to this truck to make it the ultimate prepper truck. Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. The best quality products at the best prices. Use discount code SURVIVALPREPPER, all caps, all one word, for 10% off. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.